Now let us look at two sat formulas and how to solve them in linear time. A two sat formula is a CNF formula that only has binary clauses. We assume that the unit clauses are replaced by clauses with repeated literals. So that will our algorithm will be designed in the way that it can handle this situation. So for example, you will have this kind of clauses where you have uh, two literals. If there is a unit clause, we will repeat it as P or P and then we have a two set formula. To present the algorithm to solve two set formula, we need to introduce a concept called implication graph. In implication graph, essentially trying to say if you set a variable true or a literal true, then you need to certain other letter needs to be made true. Okay. So you have uh, variables uh, in the formula p1 to pn which are n variables occurring in your formula and you have an implication graph v comma e. Okay. And v is a set of nodes in that graph which consists of the no, uh, a node corresponding to each variable and negation of the variable. For example, every literal is a node in this graph. Now there is edges between these literals. So if you have a clause L1 or L2, that means if negation of L1 is true, means L1 is false, then L2 has to be made true. So that, that means this is implied. If L2 is false, then L2 negation is true. Then if L2 negation is made true, then L1 must be made true. So that, that is another edge. So every clause occurring in F introduces an edge. Let's look at an example. Uh, you have this set of clauses and you have three variables P, Q and R and therefore you have a six node in your implication graph. Let's suppose you got these six nodes. Let's start drawing the edges. You have a not P or Q. So that means P implies Q. So you draw this edge P, Q. And it also implies not Q implies not p so you have a not q is taking an edge to not p just like this and then we continue not q or r then q implies r that means that gives you this edge and then not r implies q that gives you this edge now no, next edge is not r or p okay so not r or P means R implies P, okay, so R implies P gives you this edge. And again, not P is implies not R. Okay. So then it gives you not P implies not R. So yeah, this, this is nice drawing coming up. And now you have a R or Q. So R or Q means not of R implies Q. So not of R gives you Q. Similarly, if you look at it, you say not Q implies R, and then you draw this. Now we were looking at this graph, we are going to find a satisfying assignment for our formula. So let's look at some properties about this. One property is this, if there is a path from L1 to L2, there is a path from L2 bar to L1 bar. Okay, it's very easy to see because, you know, you have a L1 and there's an edge going to, let's say, L2, there is edge going back which says which takes you from you have L2 bar to L1 bar. Right? So that continues if this edge goes there then there is edge going back here. So the one observation to make here is that if let's suppose you have a path from P to not P, does it imply that you have a path from not P to P? Okay. So let's apply this theorem here. Okay, so what does it say? So it says that if there's a path from P to not P, then if I negate not P, I get P. There is a path from P to a negation of L1 bar. L1 bar's negation is not P. Okay, so so it's saying if there's a path P to not P, then there is a path from P to not P, which is basically a tautology. So if you have a path from a, a literal to its negation, then this theorem is vacuously true, so this has no effect whatsoever. Okay, and now we will see a 
definition related to strongly connected components. Let's suppose you have a strongly connected component S in your graph. So the claim is there is another strongly connected component which we call complementary uh, component that has exactly the laterals that are negation of the laterals in S. Let's pick a strongly connected component and what strongly connected component says that if you have lateral L and you have a lateral let's say another L and you need to give them name L1 and L2 and there is a path from here and then because strongly connected component there is a path from there. Okay. So now the claim here is if you there is another strongly connected component where L1 bar lifts and L2 bar lifts. Because of this, this theorem there must be a path here and then this path there okay, because of these two paths. Okay. So if there is a cycle here the cycle must be formed there. Okay. So and uh, because of that uh, you can say there is a strongly connected component here this is this component will be called SCC. For each model M that satisfies this formula F if there is a path from L1 to L2 in this graph then if m of l1 is 1 then f of l2 must be 1 i mean this is that's the nature of replication right that's the that's a by definition we had this uh, property okay now look at the another theorem it is a simple theorem uh, for each model m that satisfies f and each strongly connected component s either all nodes in the strongly connected component as 1 or all of them 0 i mean it's clear if one guy is one, all of them else has to be one because you know, as soon as one is set to one, then what do you do? Uh, others cannot be zero because they're reachable from that node. That means it supplies to be one. Okay. So either all of them one, if none of them are one, that model must give them some value, then it must be otherwise it's zero. So therefore, either it's either all one and all zero. All the nodes in strongly connected components are basically can be viewed as one blob where all be set to one or all set to zero, then we can see them as a as a unit point of reasoning for us. So what you can call it the reduced graph. A reduced graph is means the graph over the strongly connected component. Okay? So if the, you assume that every strongly connected component is a node in the, this reduced graph and there's edge between them, if there's the literals within them has some edge. Okay? So for example, in this graph, uh, there's a two strongly connected component, this guy and this guy. Okay? and uh, there is an edge going on so therefore there is an edge between these okay? this two node graph is called the reduced graph okay okay so we assign zeros and ones to these strongly connected components let's look at another theorem if two strongly connected component s and s prime okay has an edge then their complementary complement should also have a edge okay so now s prime c is connected to sc okay so this is very same but same idea which is was was uh, was taking the path l1 to l2 right so the the, the the l2 bar had a path to l1 so similarly the same same idea implies here so you can just lift the idea so now let's me state the the final theorem this formula f is sat if and only if there are no strongly connected component where uh, p and not p both occurs inside okay so why that is the true okay so if they occur in the same strongly connected component clearly if one is made true then one has to be made true and therefore it's is unsatisfiable okay so there's no way you can satisfy it but if that does not happen so how i'm going to say it's satisfiable if that is not true there must be some way to construct the model so let's see how we can do that okay so we construct a model of f as follows okay initially all laterals are unassigned okay and you have this uh, graph available to you now we iteratively assign our laterals true and false and eventually everybody gets assigned okay? so what we do we see that if some laterals are unassigned then we continue so and then you get to 2.1 we pick a strongly connected component S such that that all its children are assigned to one. If all its children are assigned one, then this guy is ready to be assigned to one. I mean, if you make this guy one, no, his children are already one, so nobody is going to uh, be worried like, oh, you made this guy one, then I have to become one. So his children are already one, so this guy was made one, all happy. Okay, and all 
literals of s are set to 1 and consequently all the complement is gets assigned 0 okay so, okay let's look at an example uh, take this example you have a, a implication graph which has uh, four nodes s1 s2 and s1 complement is s1 c here and s2 complement is s2 c then you have uh, the edges of the reduced graph let us run the algorithms on this graph we need to find a node which has no all the children assigned to one there is a only one node s1 which has actually no children so therefore this guy is ready to be assigned okay if you make it one nobody else uh, will complain you set it to one as soon as s1 is set to one its complement is set to be zero okay so all the literal setting here their negations are there right so they has to be made zero so you set it to zero now uh, next goal is uh, to find another node which is uh, unassigned and all the children is set to one so who which are the candidates s2 is one candidate and s2c is also a candidate uh, you can choose either of two okay so let's choose this guy or this guy but in this example uh, we set it to one okay the s2 is set to one then s2c has to be set to zero now the situation is that all the nodes have been assigned to either 0 or 1. Now you have constructed the model and therefore you are done. Okay. Now the question is why this algorithm is correct. Okay. So this algorithm is correct in a way that it from this direction it start building ones okay, and from this direction it start putting zeros. So it never occurs the situation that 1 comes here and 0 comes there. Okay this situation is actually disallowed and every other combination is okay so now let's uh, see why that happens okay so in this algorithm we need to show that that key and step 2.1 that is the key step we can always find an s which has all children assigned to one okay so first the question comes there is an unassigned node whose all children are assigned i mean uh, if, if they're all nodes which are some children assigned and some are unassigned then you cannot pick any node at all so it's very simple you pick an unassigned node and descend down okay and if there is an assigned child okay? and uh, some point of time you have to get stuck right because it's a finite graph you will terminate wherever you get you finish that node will have a all children assigned now i have to argue that in such a node right you cannot have a, a child which is assigned to one okay? why that is the case because when you somebody is set to one right its complement is set to zero and that guy is being let's say is set to one and all its children should have been one right but think about the complementary uh, strongly connected component that was about to set to zero it must have parents right and those parents have been complements of these guys and they must have been already zero so therefore if somebody is about to set to zero then it's all its parents must be zero therefore it cannot happen then an assigned node has a child which is zero therefore you cannot have this situation this proves that the our algorithm always can find s and can make progress so now we have this theorem a two satisfiability problem can be solved in linear time and this is surprising to some minds that a two set problem is a linear problem and uh, and three set is an exponential time